Hello everybody and happy Easter if you celebrated uh, to all our Lazio fans and followers all around the world. And happy Easter even to you, Alison McKenzie. I hope you're fine. Yeah, thank you and to you. Um, yeah, I mean, could be happier, <laughs> I suppose, after what happened yesterday. Um, but thankfully, I was at a wedding yesterday and I didn't actually have to see the game. But uh, it was pretty miserable. And... Um, yeah, it's going to be a fun podcast, isn't it? Lots of upbeat things to discuss. Absolutely. A lot of questions have arrived today and we thank all our listeners and our followers for all these questions. And yes, really disappointing. It's good to have 24 hours to digest this unbelievable defeat. Uh, again, as I tweeted yesterday, uh, Kievo looks to have you know, a sort of special power when they play against Lazio uh, away especially because when when Lazio plays uh, in Verona usually Lazio wins instead on the other side when Kievo comes to the Stadio Olimpico it looks like they are a great team I tweeted yesterday that if Kievo had played all the season against Lazio they would have been in the Champions League because I think <laughs> Lazio is the only team this year who didn't beat Kievo we draw uh, <laughs> away and we lost at home. That's simply unbelievable for a team that this is the second victory they made this season, Alistair. This is simply unbelievable. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, that's the reaction I think most people have had is disbelief, to be honest. I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, everything was set up perfectly because you're you're again in a position um, as a Lazio fan of getting your hopes up a little bit going into that game because... We saw um, Milan being held by Parma to a draw um, earlier in that day. And then, obviously, there was the promise of either Inter or Roma or both dropping points later in the day. Um, so, yeah, you know, it you can't have asked for a better game, like you say, than playing Kievo, who are already, already relegated at home in front of a decent crowd, as, like you said, this is a team that's only won one game all season, and that was against Frosinone, who are almost as bad. They'd only scored 22 goals all season going into that game. I mean, it's an unforgivable defeat, this, and it's really sent shockwaves through the fan base a little bit, I think, because we know it's not been a particularly good season um, in terms of the team's performances, but something like this happening really takes it to an entirely new perspective and um, has alarm bells ringing about all sorts of parts of this team, as we'll get onto, because a lot of the questions we've had have been highlighting these things, I suppose. Yeah, one thing is, uh, as you were saying, uh, there was the good result from, uh, from Milan drawing against Parma just before the match started. I was hoping that... Lazio players started the match, you know, pushing immediately to look to score immediately to to send the match in the in the right direction. And to add to this, seeing the press conference of the day before of Di Carlo saying, "Well, we are really relegated. We're going to start some of the players who played l less this season to give them a chance." He had the impression that K was coming here a little bit like Udinese did on Wednesday, you know, not on holiday, but thinking, "Okay, the." This is not the big match for us. We we just have to play and see how things go. And it, it was astonishing for me to see Lazio playing so slowly, so, uh, you know, not pushing at all. It looks like at a certain point, Kiwo was fighting for the Champions League and Lazio was the team already relegated because Lazio players weren't pushing at all. We were so slow. I know it was hot, but this cannot be an excuse. Lazio played so slowly, so... You know, like like if players really didn't care about that match. That was the biggest concern I felt about this this performance. Yeah, and it's not the first time we've seen that, is it? I mean, that that kind of attitude and the failure of the team to really apply themselves in the in the way that we would like to see as fans. There are very few players in that really get a sense that they are giving 100% in every game and care about the idea of Champions League qualification as much as we do as fans. Um, but, you know, I think it does raise concerns as well. We we got asked about the fitness of the team not that long ago because of all these late goals we were conceding. And at the time, I, 
I said I didn't think it was a, a massive concern, but I'm kind of changing my tune about that now because it's been in this busy period, you know, where there have been a lot of games. I think it's it's shown perhaps on the one hand that this team's physical levels aren't particularly good in comparison to the teams you're playing. And also on top of that, it's really highlighted that the, the strength and depth of this squad isn't what we'd hoped it would be at the start of the season either because the rotated players, I suppose, who've come into the team have failed to perform. And when we've got our... Um, our first choice players and our star players, I suppose, also under cocktail. And uh, I think that was uh, almost the perfect storm yesterday of all these things combined. You know, it was it was the physical fragility of this team. It was the mental fragility of this team. Their complete blackout moments coming back to haunt us with those two goals, failing to take chances. I mean underperforming players 